Good morning. It's Off the Press again, the program where we dissect the headlines and make sense of it. And this morning with me is Ekene Ezeji. Good morning, Ekene. Good morning. Lovely Monday morning. Yes, and it's great to see you here. Mm. So we have with us four, three papers, The Punch, This Day, The Nation, Four, Vanguard, and then Complete Sports. And we're beginning this morning with The Punch newspaper. Uh, it will be displayed shortly on your screens there. And the big story there is Buhari's government's refusal to obey court orders. Lawless Nigerians say that on page two. And then Nigeria at 59. Oshibajo, go on, and governors express hope. Uh, TUC others lament woes. That's on page seven. Al Sasid Buhari as president. Bakare insists on page 17. You will find the story on page 17. There we have picture story of. Uh, Buhari, of Dasuki, El Zazaki, Shaware, and the rest. Now, President DSS treating judiciary with contempt, MBA says, and others. FG disregard for rule of law, scaring away investors, says Falono. And then 23 pregnant women and kids rescued from Lagos baby factory. Scary story. That's on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. Uh, it's displayed there. And my abductors always think my son's rich. Sia Sia's mother. Good news, she's been released. Mm. And her story is on page 12. Uh, Nigeria's exports rise by 10.57 trillion naira in two years on page 27. And then budget funding Senate to probe federal government uh, foreign loans on page 10. Where do we begin this morning? Gosh, I guess we have to look at the what they call the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. you know, the government, the attack on the, well, I won't call it an attack. Well, do you say the position against the government concerning mm -hmm. their Refusal. obedience to court orders? And I, I have to give it to the punch. I like the way they seem to be going about their journalism, if you like. You know, when they want to do a story, they seem to set it out in a way that makes it clear that this is the story they want to focus mm -hmm. on. You know, we've looked at when they've done the, the schools, when they've done the hospitals, they put the pictures there. And now, clearly, this is the statement they want to make on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to agree that a lot of people are behind them. They ran an opinion poll, which is the confidence they have going to into the story, this story, mm -hmm. that majority of the people who responded, I even responded to one of these polls, mm -hmm. maybe not the punch one, though, um, because clearly this is an affront to democracy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's Wale Shonika that said, you know, the more they do this, the more they tip us into a state of anarchy. Because if you're giving, sending out the message that you'll only obey the orders that you want to obey, then why should you we obey you? You see what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and it's not that we're advocates for anarchy, but this is where everybody sees it's going. So why, don't, why doesn't our government see read the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, part of what makes it slightly sad is that, you know, the very uh, judge, I think Judge ju ju Taiwo Taiwo, who agreed to the 45 day, um, holding him for 45 days, is the same judge who says, look, actually let him go. Mm -hmm. um, and yet you refuse to accept that. And then you go and find another judge to arraign him in front of today. I mean, I'm not even interested so much in what's going to happen today anymore. I I'm even upset. Mm -hmm. I maybe I shouldn't get emotionally involved, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I were the judge, the, if I were the justice system, we would all stand together, we'll close ranks and say, look, we're not going to have any other case on this matter until mm -hmm. you obey the previous uh, order. Really? So uh, nobody's going to you know, be there for you to arraign him in front of because until you obey the previous order, we you have no proceed. more business with you. Mm. So for anybody to agree to have him arraigned in front of them, it's almost like you're breaking ranks. And mm -hmm. I feel the only message this government will get is when all of us stand together as one and say, look, you are governing on our behalf, so you need to listen to us. Mm -hmm. We're not happy with the way you're going about things, so it's time you got your house in order. So I'm happy with the punch for making this a, a focal point, okay. a, a centerpiece, mm -hmm. um, because I think we all need to accept that this is against our democracy, and mm. our democracy is at stake here. Mm -hmm. And that should not be the norm, so to speak. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, Kenne, there's a um, bit of good news here. See us, mom is... Thank you for um, turning my attention to that. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're all relieved. Mm. I'm 75 days, almost two months, and this is an elderly lady of 80 years old. Uh, and, and one of the things we know he was saying was that he was concerned for her health. This yeah. is a lady whose health was, you know, a bit did you say vulnerable? Mm. Um, the, I always think I was saying to you off air, the, the irony, I don't know if you should smile or feel unhappy mm. when I watched on TV, the, 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 the press who were covering the story, was that the young lady with her was busy saying how they entertained them with malt no. and, you know, they were telling us what they gave them to eat, lots of indomie mm. and uh, soup and garlic. And that's a big and distraction. I'm like, I don't, I don't no, know, sometimes no, no. it's as if we're distracted by the fact that's that a huge these one. human beings are 
they're human beings, mm -hmm. quite all right, but they're actually criminals. They they're criminals. Yeah, so we need to separate keep... the two. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if we're trying to be sympathetic to them. No, there's no room for but that. But we need to, I, again, this is where I feel a clear message needs to be sent mm -hmm. out because I feel things like this corruption, um, disdain for the law, thrives when you, you blur the lines. Mm -hmm. you, 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 yes, you may be hungry, so are we. You know, does that entitle us to go and take someone's liberty and, and hold them captive? The lady was still crying in spite of the Gary and everything they gave her mm -hmm. and the fact that they bought medicine for her. Because being in a state where you don't know if you're going to die, a precarious situation, is very troubling psychologically and emotionally in a way that she may not even be able to process. Yeah. You know, she may not know how it has, the, the sort of marks it has left on her till much later on, if, if at all. There's a lot of traumatic and so, experience, no, we're not, really. We can't belittle this at mm. all. So I, I hope we hear that they've tracked these men down because our police are doing better and better at you know, pursuing these criminal elements. We want, hope to hear that this isn't the end of the matter. True. I know people are happy she's been found, but we want to also find the criminal the people involved mm. and want to bring them to justice. Mm, absolutely correct. So, um, Shiba Jan Gowon uh, express hope uh, over the country as we become 29. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to yeah, be 29. Yeah, we're looking forward. I don't, know, I don't know why I'm looking forward to it because uh, most of the feedback I'm getting is that people don't really see that we're at that point where we should be celebrating. Mm -hmm. Rather, they're seeing it as a, do you say, a, a, a milestone to reflect and say, look, we need to get things right. I have to have respect for Osibanjo at this point because I feel he's been very statesmanly. Um, he's, it looks like he's under siege. The mm. impression you get is that he's under siege. and But he's conducting himself in a very... I dare say presidential manner. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not trying to be, to be um, I don't know, suggest anything there. I just like his comportment. We, we want more and more people like him who know how to rein themselves in and just recognize what is at stake and know when you know, they're in the spotlight and, mm -hmm. and that they ought to Manage set it. an example for them, for, for people who are watching, mm -hmm. unlike Bakari, I don't know if you read out his, mm. you know, I think Bakari is trying to have his cake and eat it. He wants to come before his congregation and say certain things, which he knows will be taken literally and mm. then come back and say, well, it's just my aspiration. Mm. Am I not allowed? I feel there's a little yeah. trickery going and on there. And for a, a so-called man of God, he mm. needs to be careful when he starts treading that kind of, of line. If you want to speak, speak straight. Don't speak from two sides of your mm. mouth. Are you saying you want to be president? Are you saying God said you'll be president? Because a lot of people called into question his previous so-called prophecy mm -hmm. against Obasanjo, mm -hmm. which people still remember. So you don't come out in a public forum like that, knowing that people have their eyes on you and make such a statement. And maybe when you're surprised to the extent, at the extent to which it's trending, you try mm -hmm. and re, you know, say, well, am I not allowed to mm -hmm. uh, aspire well, also, for the highest office in the, in the land? In the land. He clarified that um, it's a video from a year and seven months ago, according to not him. Not that long ago, though. Uh, yeah, so because he, he clearly said, this is number 15, I'm number 16. So he, he's still on if mm -hmm. you like, he's still on, on, on the right tangency mm -hmm. because this presidency is not yet number, over. Yeah. So it, it, it sounds like he was prophesying. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he was saying he's the next in command. And mm -hmm. it sounds like he's saying God said to him. him. And so, no, we're not fools. Okay, so we'll wait until October 6th when he's going to have a national broadcast. He said he's going to have a broadcast. <laughs> so we know what all of this uh, is yeah, about. I hope he gets good advice going forward. I hope so too. Mm -hmm. Anyways, any other thing? Uh, this story is quite scary. Uh, please find it on page uh, four and five of the pregnant yes please we need to talk about woman. that because i know with you we talked about another home um and yes. now yet another home and both in lagos, in lagos true. very surprising mm. and for me you know what it says is that look people are at that point i know we've we, it's not that this is the first time but usually we've seen them in the southeast now mm. they're in lagos even though they said some of the women who were brought in to came in were from the from yeah from a quiet bomb from Aba, from you know emo state so it, it's almost like uh, well human trafficking really mm. because some of them didn't it's another know form of it. did, they didn't know they were being brought to be mm. impregnated and their babies being sold for three hundred thousand for four hundred thousand depending on their sex some knew but some didn't some were told they were coming here to get work and then they were so again it's a wake-up call to our mm. young ladies and even those who are saying they know and they're ready to sell their babies i really want them to i i, I think they need to be counseled again mm. and, and and money isn't everything i know we're in difficult times but the minute we start making money the deciding factor then we're really lose it all. we're out at sea okay in the interest of time we're going to do something different today we're going mm. to read the headlines and then we'll just analyze all ones if you don't mind no, I'm happy okay with so that. we'll go to this day and it says nigeria's oil revenue threatened as india shifts to alternative markets and then there's the picture story of uh, prayers for nigeria at 59 and in major crackdown customs short car dealers across lagos we are only interested in revenue recovery says agency because global motors sky 
primates and others are also affected. Uh, that's what this day is saying. And then we'll go to the nation where again it says Kaduna Islamic Center victims return home. That's on page 8. That story was from last week, I remember. And 19 expectant moms freed from Lagos baby factory on page 6. The same story that Ekena was just alluding to. Odua, Odua launches 4 billion naira estates in Ibadan. Bakari explains presidential video. Did it shines as Leicester beats Newcastle. That's on page 47. And Army arrest insurgent supplier on page 43. Now, go on to military chiefs. It's time to end insurgency. And then we have, of course, the picture story of uh, uh, Madame Sia Sia. Nigeria, a peaceful, prosperous Nigeria in the making, says uh, Vice President. And then my ordeal in kidnappers then. Please grab a copy of this and hear the story of the 80-year-old uh, mother of Sia Sia. It's on the front page and then it's continued again on page 7. And then the Vanguard, for the Vanguard we have investors may, may lose 1.8 billion monthly, uh, monthly to VAT. Asaba indiges demand apology and compensation for civil war massacre begins memorial activities October the 7th, a week actually from today. Now, FG moves to extradite foreign collaborators for trials. That's on page 11. Again, Nigeria at 59. Nations democracy seek on throes of death, says Okoge on page 9. And the big story here is don't humiliate Oshibajo out of office. Bakari saying that uh, there is disquiet in presidency. Clark Adeban, John Modo, and Beatrice say so. And why we visited Oshibajo Khan. Uh, please find the stories inside. And then we have a picture story of our map, Nigeria at 59, with all the agendas. You find the story on page 26. Now, Siasia's mother narrates 77 days. Uh, the Vanguard says the 77 days ordeal in kidnappers then begged to be taken to hospital. Yes, she will need to. And I sent it to review obsolete laws reform electoral act on page 8. Police, uh, police uncover baby factory in Lagos, rescue 19 pregnant girls. Uh, lawyers berate DSS for flouting court order. DSS arrest journalist Chido Onuma at Abuja. That's on page 9. And then the back is the sports news. Please grab a copy of the complete uh, sports uh, news for yourself. Uh, can I very quickly, which well, one do you, you want to you have to, to help on? me with that. But okay. let me at least start off with the uh, Kaduna House of Horrors. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that was really horrific to it learn. Has... And you saw the pictures, some of them the over the weekend. You saw the, the faces of mm. the young children there. I think 15 of them are not feeling very well. Over 300 of them, um, 77 are children, clearly, from the age of 6 to 10 and above. And um, the, the stranger thing for me is that the legal... Uh, team that are defending them mm. even feel that they have a defense. Mm. They've actually said no, Sadly. that they're going to stand up for them, that they're actually a reformist, a reform home, they've done some good. I'm thinking to myself, unless we're missing something, mm -hmm. the president has even come out quickly on his return immediately to say this is a house of torture and it's yeah. an embarrassment. So really on what condition. basis would you say when they find children chained up some and Reuters, Bitten. so let's even forget that you know an international press have come in and interviewed some of the victims immediately. Reuters mm. were there and they've told you that some of them were sexually harassed. Yes. Some of them were you know hung up from their arms till mm. the bones were dislocated. On what basis Very are you chilling. going to tell us now mm -hmm. that you have a defense? You should actually be afraid of the fact that we should be coming after you mm -hmm. for human rights offenses. There are, I mean, visuals. Are, are, are we at that, that stage where we're calling black white and white black? Because I really don't understand that so. the you know, legal firm will want to be associated with defending such acts. Maybe we're being precipitated. Well, we can so, clearly see. Uh, we're really going to have to watch them and see what they have to say about this because mm -hmm. I, I was really shocked that such things could be happening. It is horrifying to yeah. say the least. But thankfully, some of them have been reunited with their families. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, we'll be hearing over the days that they get some, you know, help, some sort of help to, to uh, readjust to to society as normal. Okay, uh, we're not going to touch the baby uh, factory. We already have it. We have CSS mom. Uh, the arrest of journalists. Did you hear about it? Yes, apparently, I, I heard. You know, coming in, you know that uh, it was a bit of a show showcase. Mm -hmm. uh, they met him at the airport. This is someone who would happily have gone to see them if they just asked for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not, try I'm not sure if it's to intimidate yeah. other journalists. Well, um, he said, uh, sorry to no, please do, do give me he said he, First of all, he was released after five hours. So mm -hmm. at about 10, he was arrested by five and then uh, uh, released. He said because he had a shirt written, we are all beer friends. That's why he was arrested, according to his own uh, part of the story. But the funny bit or the irony is that that shirt, that title, is actually the title of his book, and you know, so he just wore it, and maybe but there was a, a certain kind. I mean, I'm, like, I'm sure that that if it wasn't so 
just of troubling, mm -hmm. it, it would be laughable. Are we really at that stage where we're having knee-jerk reactions like this, mm. arresting journalists at the airport, and the only reason you can give for such an it's act, you know, you're, you're, you're just trying to demonstrate. I, I think we really need to keep an eye on the way we go about arresting people and mm -hmm. denying them their civil liberties because um, we have to be able to do better than this. Mm. Um, thankfully, at least they released him after five hours, but yeah, I hope he writes released. a lot about this. <laughs> I hope so too. I think basically uh, that's it. Uh, we have really touched every other thing. Um, the newspaper. I can, sadly, we're not going to look at complete sports. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you don't have tennis, so nothing to be worried about. <laughs> so uh, thank you so very much, I can, for, for joining me. me. Uh, sadly, we have to wrap it up here at uh, this point. And uh, we'll do this again tomorrow, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa, on this program of the press, where we'll tell you about the headlines, dissect it and make sense out of it, and then encourage you to get grab copies of the newspapers for yourself to get it in details. I am Amaka Okoye.